What's up, St. John and beyond? It's Father Jonathan, and today I'm going to be kind of wrapping up, I think, the series that I've been doing on the Fruit of the Spirit. Um, I know some of you have enjoyed this, and others have kind of wanted me to get back to doing certain uh, other things. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up, at least for now, uh, by talking a little bit about self-control. And uh, the good thing about self-control, about talking about self-control, uh, is that it really is kind of the basis for all of these fruit of the Spirit that we've been talking about, all of these things that we want, if we want to be kind, if we want to be patient, if we want to be chaste, and so on and so forth, all of them require us to have self-control, or continencia, as, as uh, it was his, uh, has been historically known. Um, so that's a good thing for us to talk about you know, cultivating. And it's pretty easy to understand. What is self-control? Well, it's when I have mastery over myself. It's when I'm the one who decides what I'm going to do and, and how I'm going to do it, rather than just allowing myself to kind of coast based on my feelings at the moment or based on my uh, desires uh, at the moment. So how do we get that? How do we develop that self-control? Um, it can be difficult, especially in the moment that we're living in, uh, because, uh, you know, we're all in the house and we're cooped up and we're on top of each other. And how do you stop and, and take the time um, that you need to really develop that, that skill of, of self-control? So I'm just going to give you a couple of pieces of advice. Take them or leave them, uh, depending on your situation, whether or not it's useful to you or not. Uh, the first thing I would say, and this is very similar to, to what I said uh, in the video about patience, um, and that is uh, that you need to become self-aware, um, and so being able to sort of stop at various points during your day and, and to remind yourself of who you are is important, but it goes even a step further when we're talking about self-control than it, than it did with patience. It's not just that you're self-aware, but that you are, that you're snapping into it, right? Uh, because the way in which we often find ourselves out of control is that we're just cruising through life, right? Uh, and we don't even hardly realize what it is that we're putting in our mouths or, or what's coming out of our mouths when we're talking to people or uh, the things that we're doing. It's, you know, it's, it's like we wake up in the middle of them or, you know, or something like that half the time. Um, and so half the battle for self-control is simply being awake, having this part of our brain opening up so that we can um, actually uh, be the ones who determine what it is that, that, that's happening in our lives. Um, so how do you do that? Um, well, a good practice to have is a daily prayer routine at least once a day. And I think for many of us, it would be helpful to do even, you know, more than once a day, but at least once a day to stop and have quiet prayer to the extent that you can. You, you know, you may live in a situation where it's hard to get any kind of quiet, but to really just kind of stop and be still and just be with God for a minute. And in that time where you're there with God to notice the reality of that moment, right? So you're aware of yourself and you're aware of God and his presence. So you might start with actually some just basic awareness of your own surroundings. Uh, here's where I am. Here's how it feels to be in this room in this moment. Here's what this chair feels like against my back. Here's what the air feels like against my skin. You know, all of that is kind of grounding you in the moment that you're in. And then to sort of open that up further and to be aware of, okay, and I am, uh, I am here and God is here with me and I am aware of, of his presence um, being a part of me, being a part of uh, everything that's happening around me in this moment, that God is not distant, he's not off on a cloud somewhere, but that he's actually present with me. And once you get to that point, then you can start to actually take your desires and and really notice them right not just give in to them but notice them so you kind of sit there in the moment for instance you may say okay well I feel hungry well why do I feel hungry uh, well is it really hunger or is it just I want the taste of you know whatever it is 
Um, okay, well, maybe it's I want the taste of that thing. All right, well, where's that desire coming from? And you can really kind of stop and sort of, you know, you don't have to just be the desire. You can actually see it, you can look at it, and then once you can do that, then you can look at it with God. Because remember, this is, this is prayer. This is not just meditation or something like that. This is your opportunity to be with God and to allow Him to kind of help direct you to, to a healthier uh, position or healthier attitude. And so you can say, okay, if I indulge this desire to the fullest degree, how does that affect my relationship with God? You know, Lord, is this a good desire? Is it not a good desire? Uh, is this building me up in you? Uh, or is this pulling me away from you? And, and just allowing for that opportunity for, for God uh, to guide you in that uh, kind of prayer and to guide you through it. Um, so that's the first thing I would do. The second thing is to, to just be aware of the things that, that are hard on your self-control, right? Um, one of the things that we say when we make an act of contrition, at least in certain forms of the act of contrition, uh, is that uh, in the future we're going to avoid the near occasion of sin, uh, which, by the way, I also think would be just uh, an excellent uh, band name, The Near Occasion of Sin, right? Like, people would come out to, to see that band, wouldn't they? I would. Anyway, uh, wh what are we saying, though? When we say we're going to avoid the near occasion of sin, what are we talking about? Well, we're, we're saying that we're not going to put ourselves in a position where we are essentially tempting ourselves, you know? Um, if you are an alcoholic, it is probably not a good idea for you every night to walk into a bar, sit down next to people who are drinking, uh, have beer or, or wine or, or liquor or whatever it is, you know, two inches from you at all times. Like, you're setting yourself up for, for failure at that point, right? Um, and many of us do this. We set ourselves up for failure. We're, we're like, okay, well, I'm going to be strong. Uh, and yet, you know, we put ourselves in an environment or in a place where we're constantly going to be tested by whatever the thing is for us. So if, if it's a certain food item for you, you know, you surround yourself with it. Um, or if your phone is the thing that knocks you out of self-control, you know, uh, you're, 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 you have it constantly available to you all the time. Maybe the thing to do is, uh, you know, put the phone away. <laughs> Lock the phone up in such a way so that um, you have to put in an extra layer of code to get it open or maybe even uh, make it so that your friend or your family member has to help you to open the phone with, with a lock-in code or something. The whole point of that being uh, that it, it's, it, it slows you down. <laughs> And so there's this extra second, and in that extra second, you can go, ah, okay, I'm here, I'm in control, I know who I am, right? And that's the key to this whole thing. Remember, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit, so it is something you have to cultivate, it is something that you have to work on, but it's not something that you have to invent, right? God has already given you the grace in Christ. Uh, that gift is already yours. It's just a matter of you cooperating with what God is doing and allowing that thing uh, that he's already started in you to come to fruition. Um, any kind of discipline can help with this, by the way. I mean, um, you know, one of the things that really can help with self-control is when we, we have goals and we set a schedule and we kind of follow that schedule uh, in the same way that, that uh, people follow a rule of life, right? Um, and so, okay, every day at 3 o'clock, I'm going to run a mile. Uh, every day at 7 o'clock, I'm going to read 37 pages. I don't know. I'm making this stuff up. But you get the point, right? And then you stick to it, and you do it, and the more you do it, the more disciplined you become. But the mistake I think a lot of people make, and, and, and especially uh, for you young people who are watching, is it becomes all or nothing. And so you come up with a, with a schedule for yourself, with a discipline for yourself that's unrealistic. I am gonna, I'm going to run 15 miles every day. I'm going to read 137 pages every day. I'm going to eat nothing but uh, broccoli and rice. You know, I don't know. But you, you, you just, you overload yourself. And you can't possibly do all of those things. And what ends up happening is, uh, because you can't possibly do all of those things, um, you fail at it, and then you just, and then you give up, 
right? Well, I couldn't do all of that, and so I'm going to do none of that. I would say the best thing for you to do, pick one thing, make it reasonable, right? Okay, something you reasonably could achieve. Give yourself some kind of reward along the way, okay? So, you know, I'm going to read for an hour every night from 5 to 6 p.m., and afterwards, if I manage to actually read the hour, I will allow myself uh, uh, a little bit of time to um, a little bit of time to to play a video game or or, or whatever. Um, so you know you can kind of uh, set the thing up in that sort of a way so that you're setting yourself up for success. And what you'll find is if you really stick to that and you keep doing it and you keep at it and you keep at it and you keep at it, not only is it going to help you with whatever the thing is it's going to help you with other things. When you have discipline in one part of your life, that starts to affect the other things in your life. It starts to help you to build control over, uh, over other things. So, um, uh, you know, I, I would say pick something and, and really go at it. Um, final piece of advice, though, uh, especially in this moment that we're living in, which is so hard and when we're in survival mode most of the time, be gentle with yourself, okay? Be graceful with yourself. You're not always going to hit the mark with it. 